Okay, quick update. It is October the 7th. Uh, tomorrow I'm flying back to Dresden, Germany. Uh, I have to rebuild an optical system and a photolithography tool over there. Uh, same thing I was doing last time on a different machine. So anyway, uh, progress has been made. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around, show you what we've done. Uh, not really related to the theater. This is going to be for downstairs, but it's parts to build a half-size version of the dipole woofers I have up there to use in the downstairs room. So it'll just be four 15-inch drivers. So anyway, that's some of the parts for it. So over here we have the what will be part of the decorative columns that include the side surround speakers. You can see uh, one of the parts for what uh, those those parts are actually be part of the uh, side grills or grill cloths for the speakers but these are in progress uh, got uh, some quarter inch MDF with a red oak veneer uh, onto the sides of them you can't really see it very well but uh, you can see it a little bit on that one and then we've got some solid uh, pieces of oak uh, basically we're gonna have you can kind of approximate that on there I was gonna try to glue one of these on before I left but Decided I'll just wait until I get back and do it all then. And then, of course, uh, we've got another piece here that's been cut to fit that. So that's going to go on there, back off a little bit. So it's going to be, you know, rounded over up here on the top. Make it look kind of nice. There'll be a grill cloth because that's all going to be stuffed with uh, rock wool, about six inches of rock wall insulation inside that. And then of course down here in the bottom, we have the compartment for the LEDs. And then you can see the, the bottom part is open. So uh, you'll be able to see the light from the LEDs shining under there. This is the same baseboard that was upstairs already. The one that I said in previous videos that I was going to rip out and replace with stain grade, but changed my mind. So the little part that I did rip out has to be put back, but this is going to go, uh, or we'll basically wrapping around the bottom of these things. And then of course it'll have that grill cloth that's uh, probably have that removable with magnets to cover that up. And then the uh, CBT array side speakers, three on each side of the room. We're gonna go on top of these things and then a similar or basically the same thing on top of the speaker extending on up to the ceiling. So let's go upstairs and take a quick look at what we've got done on the surrounds. There's the old Altec uh, A7, voice of the theater. I'm probably gonna get some kind of little uh, vacuum tube amplifier and set up something here to have those things where they can be playing. So just for nostalgia value. So in the control room, redid my projector mount. I don't know well, you're going to be able to see that with that light right there. Got rid of those uh, soft mount things. Probably don't really need them. And, uh, you know, I figured it might sag over time. So that's up there. It's actually connected to power right there. We just got an HDMI cable just kind of dripping down here. But I've actually got a hole cut there. We've even got a way to get the wire from there all the way down to here. Of course, this is where I was originally planning to have all the front end equipment and other stuff faced into the theater. I decided to cover that up, sheetrock over it, and then I decided not to do that. I'm gonna instead fill that with uh, rock wool, have maybe some kind of a, a frame and grill frame uh, cloth sewing on the other side of it and on this side. You know, we've got about six inches there, but I could put two more inches on each side have eight or ten inches of rock wall there and then duplicate the same thing on the other side of the control room this control room is kind of a you know two entrances here so basically duplicate it over here so and then uh, the 12 volt trigger of course will come from the processor over there to turn the projector on up here and then you kind of see a wall plate I don't know if you can see it or not so we can zoom in on that Anyway, there's a connector there. It will send that 12 volt trigger down to here where I'll probably put some kind of a uh, box with a relay in it so that 12 volts will turn on the AC power. 
which goes up to this uh, exhaust fan that I've installed so it'll kind of be pulling cool air from the front of the projector where it projects into the room uh, across it to go just vent up into the attic basically uh, this is all stuff for whole house audio 11 zones but uh, it's a very low priority compared to the theater so but anyway so that's kind of it for the control room but let's go into the theater and see the uh, of course, you got the screen covered up with sheets while I'm gone because the AC never really worked right and, uh, you know, it turned into a big mess and they finally came through very well in the end, though. They're going to be installing two more AC vents just like these on the opposite side of the room. They removed the four-ton unit, put in a five, did a bunch of work on the duct work. So the AC went from basically not working at all to working extremely well. So... Uh, I was pretty pissed off at those guys for a while, but they came through. So anyway, you can kind of see the projector right there. It still needs some adjustment, as you can see. It's sitting kind of low in there. Also, I've not put the anamorphic lens in yet, so it'll be mounted in there. And you can see I've pulled the wires out here for the side surrounds. Uh, because they're going to probably do the spray foam for the sides and the ceiling up here while I'm in Germany. It's going to be getting two inches of closed cell spray foam, which will make everything a lot more rigid. And then down here, what do we have? We have the side surround speakers. Six of them. And they look done, but they're really not because the wiring hasn't been done yet. Plus, I forgot. These use six screws per driver. So I didn't order enough screws. But I ordered more, and they came in today. Possibly tonight I'll put in the rest of them. It's about, about 100 screws to put in. Or I may just wait till I get back from Germany. So, but uh, anyway, those will be sitting on those bases. You know, one, well, you can kind of see where they're going to be from where the wires are. So it'll be three sides around speakers. Have not really designed the rear speakers yet, but one thought would be to put a dipole on a flat panel instead of having any depth. I can actually pull these seats out some because you can see there's quite a bit of clearance there. Maybe keep these six or eight inches away from the back wall. Have a dipole directly overhead so that the listener is in the null. So they wouldn't really hear the speaker at all. But what they would hear is the reflection off the back wall. So maybe that would work. I don't know. If other people have good ideas on how to do the rear that would be good and one thought in fact was to not do anything just let the rear be the cheap seats i mean 90 percent of the time it'll only be the middle row anyway and then basically instead of this back side speaker being a side let it be the rears but i think i'll keep them all aside and then uh and then just do something either the dipole up there so they hear the reflection off the back wall another thought would maybe be just to uh Put something in the wall, let it open out into the uh, control room. So the control room would basically be the box. So just kind of like an infinite baffle. So, but anyway, that's that's kind of where it's at. Uh, we did get to watch a movie in here the other night. My brother Marshall K, who's older than me, and his son Austin K, my nephew. Uh, in fact, Austin is the one that kind of got the projector up there and uh, turned on and set it up so that it was on the screen and everything and in focus so we watched the uh, Top Gun uh, Maverick it was two nights ago I guess and we're using my old AVM 60 preamp processor which was still in the box back like four years ago I sent it in for a warranty repair and then in the meantime I bought a Marantz 7705 or something like that uh, to use until it came back from repair and then I just never swapped them back out. So pulled the Anthem out two days ago. First time it came out of the box after four years ago repair. Worked great. And then I turned it on this morning. It didn't work at all. It's uh, some kind of forced update it's wanting to do. And it won't do it. So I've been in contact with Anthem. And they gave me some instructions on what to try. And that didn't work. So uh, it's I'm hoping to be able to ship it off. First thing in the morning before I head to the airport, but I don't know. If not, I'll probably just buy something else and 
deal with that later. It's a friend of mine. Actually, the guy that bought my old house with the old theater could use it, so maybe just give it to him or something once it's fixed. Uh, we're going to make a change on the crossover. Right now, I'm using, uh, got three of these mini DSP 2x4 HDs on each side of the room here. Using one for the woofers, one for the mid range, one for the tweeters. I'm going to change that. The one for the woofers, again, I'm going to use two of the outputs for these dipole woofers here. The other two outputs I'll use to control the, what's going to be up here in the ceiling, which is those Ultimax 18s, eight of them. And then on the uh, mid range and tweeter, I'm going to get mid range and tweeter both on one DSP module. And then, so I won't need as many of these. I can pull a couple of those out and use them for something else. But uh, the idea is, I mean, right now when I'm EQing it, I have to mid, mid, you know, EQ the mid range, for example, and then disconnect the wire and then connect it to the tweeter module and then EQ it. And then, you know, going back and forth, it's a pain. So I'm going to get it down so it's just one module for the lines and one module for the woofers and subwoofers. So, and then of course these are gonna have passive crossovers, which is something I don't really like doing, but uh, you know, I've got so many freaking amplifier channels in here already, it's ridiculous. I mean, 14 channels on each line, 10 channels on the center line, what's that, 28, 30, 38 channels just for those three speakers. So I don't really wanna buy amplify these or anything, so. So I'm going to design passive crossovers for them, uh, but they will still have many DSP on them to just for EQ. So, and uh, I think that's all they really need. I mean, they're just side speakers after all. So, and then of course I've got wiring up here for, uh, I don't know, I might better check that. I don't know what to do for my panel. Let's see, I have got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight wires, eight speaker wires that go from back here up to the attic on this side and another eight over here. I don't think I put any in the center. I haven't actually cut a hole in the wall there yet for the center. But uh, so I've got like 16 speaker wires. Uh, so six of those, three on each side are these. And then there's like 10 more that just go above the theater that can be used for those big subwoofers. They're going to be up there for use. At least I'll probably use three of them, or no, four of them, because there's eight of those, so four pairs. So four of them for that, so got enough for six at most, basically. And it wouldn't be that hard to uh, put in more, because it's, you know, it's, it's attic space all the way around this place for the most part. So, but anyway, so uh, the plan right now is probably just do four at most. And uh, they're supposed to replace these registers, which are adjustable vents, with fixed vents when they come to install the other two over here and uh, paint those black. In fact, I should tell them not to even install them. Just leave them here and I'll paint them and then put them up there. This thing, I started painting it with a roller. It didn't go well, so let's pull that down later and paint it black. But anyway, so this is kind of a rushed video because I'm not even packed yet. And it's, uh, what time is it? It's midnight. So uh, it's coming up midnight right now and I'm flying out tomorrow. Here's that anamorphic lens. It's by uh, Prisma Sonic. So it's gonna be mounting up there. Still got all the covers and stuff on it. So, yeah, I think that's gonna work out well, have that on there. Although it seemed plenty bright, even on the 185 inch screen with that NZ8. So, I mean, the image looked really fantastic the other night and sound was really good considering all we had was two speakers playing. But anyway, uh, oh. Here's a scrap of the uh, the oak. Got some red oak stain on it, just to see what that's gonna look like. That's probably what I'll end up using. I might do a second coat or something, make it a little darker. Uh, oh, the grow cloth that will go over the, uh, the acoustic absorbers and those bases below the, this is football jersey material in like a dark burgundy. And the plan is to put a layer of black that uh, one first actually this is also maybe well, maybe this this is this is double net i guess but anyway put the black on first and then put the uh, burgundy on top of that because this is you know very a lot of open space in it so so the black will kind of show through i think kind of make it darker so that's kind of what that's going to look like oh and then this thing is going to be uh originally i was just going to mount this on the wall for connecting everything but now I think I'm going to build 
an actual, basically like a little cabinet that covers all of this, including those outlets, and then have this mounted on the top of it for connecting all the uh, XLRs to the back of the uh, whatever preamp processor I end up getting. And I modified it a little bit. Put this connector on there with this wire coming out, which will connect to the 12 volt trigger that runs down to the other end of the room. Since there's a whole ton of amplifiers down there, I'll make some kind of a sequencing uh, device uh, so that it turns on two amplifiers at a time, maybe, you know, 500 milliseconds apart or whatever. So, oh, and then one thing, like um, Chris with uh, the My Home Theater channel, and I guess also Youth Man have their screens. Well, actually, I can't tilt it up right now, maybe because that would cause my sheets to fall. But this screen is also on hinges. So I'm planning on uh, making it where it'll tilt up. Uh, the only concern is that uh, if something went wrong, if you get these motorized things like Chris has, something went wrong and uh, one side is tilting up and the other side stops and starts torquing and twisting the, uh, the screen, that would be a bad thing. So I think what I'll do is devise uh, some kind of a, a device, maybe a, a potentiometer set up so that it rotates as this thing comes up, one on each side, put them into a comparator so that if they start seeing too much of a difference, you'd be able to calibrate it basically. So if, for example, if it's coming up and all of a sudden one side is two or three degrees or whatever you set it for, oh, here's one of these mid-range drivers like in the sides, but uh, you'd set it up basically so that uh, if it detects that it's not working on both sides, that it would shut it off. That way you don't worry about torquing the screen. That'd be really easy to do, just a little circuit to do that. So, But anyway, so I think that's about all I got time for. Like I said, it's after midnight now. I haven't even really packed yet. And my flight's actually not till 2 in the afternoon tomorrow, but I'm leaving for the airport at about 11. So... Pretty much going to have to start shutting things down, get packed up, get out of here. Don't know if I'll get this posted tonight or if I'll post it after I get to Dresden. But I'll try to get it posted. So anyway, that's about it for now. And uh, hopefully next trip home, I'll get those side speakers up and playing. Oh, and by the way, that spray foam two inch close cell above the theater is supposed to go in while I'm gone to Dresden. So when I come back, maybe I can put those 18 inch uh, drivers up there and uh, get some real low frequency so okay that's it for now